when you want a dirty fragrance to match your dirty personality. Like mine, these ones. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where here on my channel, I talk everything about scent, smell. Yes, I love a good smell, do you? So, if that is the substance to your style, then keep on watching. So today, I was inspired by Dr. Claire Smith, our regular scientist, our resident perfumista, our resident perfumista scientist, who spoke about, I was about to say idols then, <laughs> idols, who spoke about indoles, indoles in fragrance. What are they? Well, go and check out her channel, check out her video. I'll link her channel down below. She did this very recently and she spoke about indoles in fragrance. She spoke about the science. She's full of the knowledge. I'm full of the crap. I'm full of the nonsense. So if you want to go and investigate her video on what are indoles in perfume, then do that. Otherwise, when you've watched that, come back here for a little bit of fun. The first perfume I'm going to talk about is the Indolic, the queen of indoles, in my opinion, Salome by Papillon. This is an Indolic jasmine and feral musk. This is what this is, indolic jasmine and feral musk. Now, these indoles, as Claire spoke about, they are decaying florals. They are florals that are just wilting and just starting to slowly die. And they give off these pungent smells, these smells that I love, that I, I just sniff and it just blows my mind. So, anyway, Salome, this is, I'm not going to talk a lot about this because this is my ride or die indolic jasmine musk scent. It smells amazing on me. I went in with the big guns there. Let's go a little bit tamer, in my opinion. The next tame indolic floral scent combined with these animalics is Joy by Jean Patou. This is in, this is indol, I'm going to say the word indolic a lot. This is indolic rose and jasmine, rose and jasmine. This is, this is a reformulated version, but it still packs quite a punch. It is, it's very classic. It was Vivian Lee's signature scent, actually. I can see her wearing this. This is, this is timeless and classic. Now I have the Eau de Toilette. I don't know what the Eau de Parfum is like, but this is this could easily be a signature scent. It it isn't as strong. It's by no way means shape or form as strong and floral and animalic as Salome is, but this it. Mm. When you spray it, it has this vintage. A lot of vintage scents have the, these florals in this. That is mm, beautiful and vintage, classic, timeless. Um, it's an era. It's of a but. I think of a real bygone era when I smell this. I this phrase. Oh, it smells like your mother or your grandmother. Well, I'm one hot mother. I'm one hot grandmother, even though I haven't got children or grand. Well, I do have children, they're my fair babies, but I'm smelling hot. Yeah. And if you don't like it, well, you don't have taste. There, I said it. So, yes, <laughs> I don't want to offend, but I mean, this is my channel. I'll say what I want. So, Joy by Jean Patou. When this was launched in 1930, I do believe, it was a very expensive fragrance. It was it was in a time when there was a big depression and, oh, yeah, I love it. You know me, I like a vibe with the scent. Our Dr. Claire, she talks about 
everything that is so oh, fascinating about facts and science and logic. Whereas me, I'm the chaotic, creative type. So, yeah, Joy by Jean Patou. Put your nose on it if you can, because it's a beautiful rose jasmine, slightly animalic, indolic scent. Next one was allegedly, I think I think she did wear this, was worn by Elizabeth Taylor and she gifted it to Michael Jackson. I've not really spoken about this a lot. Belle à Versailles by Jean Desprez. Now this, or Jean Desprez, now this, this to me is not as wearable as some scents out there. Some people would say it is, I mean for me. It's wearable for me. I've worn this to work. I've worn, you know, I'd wear this picking my kids up. You know, I am the Princess Margaret of this world. You know, you're either Queen Elizabeth or Princess Margaret. You know, my character was Princess Margaret. So, um, I could imagine Princess Margaret wearing this, smoking and sipping on some gin. But yes, but this... This is so indolic with florals, so animalic, and this is a reformulated version. I only have to do a couple of sprays. The opening is beautiful. Those florals bloom. And then about an hour later as it dries down, the florals are decaying. This is it. In the air, it smells of real naughtiness. It smells of... Because this is what indoles are. They can be secretions from your body. You know, it's mixed with... It's that pungency mixed with a bit of the sweetness. Beautiful. Go check it out. Belle Versailles by Jean Desprez. By the way, fantastic longevity, fantastic sillage, joy, moderate, Salome off the scale, and this one off the scale as well. Now this next one is a real indolic tuberose. So I had to look at my most indolic tuberose. If you know, you know. Tuberose Criminelle by Serge Lutens. This this is like tuberose on gasoline. It really is. And do you know what? I let Ange 50 Cent smell this and she loved it. I was shocked because I didn't think this was going to be that kind of tuberose scent for her. But just stroking the bottle. Such a nice length as well, I think. You know, it's, it's a good length. Um, and it's ribbed. And I give my bottles a good clean anyway. So back to the scent. This scent, Tuberose Criminelle, it, it is waxy and green and the petals are there, the stems are there. It's, it's the real dark gothic, one of my most gothic tuberose scents, I would say. When I first smelt this, I had a bit of a wow moment. It was, wow, my nostrils were on fire. Yes, this, this is strong animalic tuberose and it is beautiful. It is a true masterpiece in my opinion. It is there, dressed all in black in a trench coat, knee-high boots, a whip, red lips, long lashes for days and you are in the Rocky Horror Picture Show and you can barely smile. That's the kind of look this is giving. Tuberose Criminelle by Serge Lutens. Next one is an animalic, again it's an animalic floral, but it's, it's a real humdinger this one. It's a Lily of the Valley one. I know it's been discontinued and people are going to scream at the, at the screen when they see this. Especially, especially, I know, 
one of my subscribers, Petra, will. She will be... Yeah, let's not go there. This is Carillon pour un ange by Andy Tower. This I managed to... secure a bottle of. I don't even have to spray this because it is so potent and strong. It is Lily of the Valley on steroids. It's probably one of my strongest perfumes. It's as strong as Salome. It's probably stronger than Salome with an indolic floral. It's not jasmine, but it's Lily of the Valley, which is a tiny, delicate little white flower but it's combined with a magic it oh, it is a magical magical it's a naughty elf scent it's a naughty fairy scent it's a naughty it's a real mischievous scent it richard loved this when i wore this he was he was crazy about it it has some green facets to it. It has this earthiness to it. It has this almost dewy-like smell as it dries down. But it's very nefarious and dark. And this is why I would say it's an indolic lily of the valley. It's really strong and potent. It is... Again, it's a, in my opinion, it's a masterpiece. It's it's so well formulated, and I I'm not sure why it was discontinued. Maybe it was to do with whatever it was to do with. I don't know, but I'm glad I have it because you know me. I have perfumes in my collection that I curate, I I use, and I wear, and I love. And looking at all of my perfumes gives me joy. And this is one of them. Carillon pour un ange by Andy Tower. The very last one is my, probably my most favourite amouage scent. And that is Opus Number no. 9 by Amouage. This is Civet with Jasmine. As it opens up, it's pungent and it's slightly peppery. Slightly, it has incense in there as well with the jasmine and those animalics. It's strong as anything. All of these are, probably except Joy by Jean Patou, which is quite moderate, out of the safest one. But this is... Again, this is jasmine on steroids, but it's done differently. Salome is jasmine combined with those feral musks. This is jasmine combined with smokiness. But the jasmine is indolic. It's, it's a decaying, slightly jasmine, I feel. It has this potency in it. It has this depth, it has complexity. All Amourage fragrances have complexity and actually I have one on my wish list that I am, I have sampled and I'm, oh, it's coming, it's coming. But um, yeah, another Amourage I know, but I got it a good deal. <laughs> I always do, don't I? But this one, Amourage scents are, you know, we're talking, they two, three hundred pounds. Um, I didn't pay that for this, although this, I didn't get too much of a markdown on it, but I wanted it. The bottle is just beautiful. I think I'm down to here at the moment with this scent here, but it has this strength and backbone and it has ferociousness. It's it's a scent that I would scent. I really want to do. I want to do a video for like 
witches and things like that. It's it's one of those scents that are that. It's like hellfire and brimstone. The matching scent in this matches the colour of the bottle, I feel. That's how I describe this. Jasmine, incense, animalics. Not really sweet. It's in your face. It's, it's a Gabby fragrance. It really is. Opus number nine by Amouage. I will also say, if you love Jasmine, but you like a sweet, fresh Jasmine, you won't like this. This Jasmine in this is, is nothing really like Um, the tobacco in Jasmine Scent by Amouage. It's nothing like Portrayal. Nothing like that. It's Poles Apart. I know some people that would love this and you know who you are. Because it's, it's personality. It's diva mode. It is... It's a hoe in a bottle. Yes. Opus number nine. Amouage. Those were my indolic decaying floral scents, my indolic scents that are animalic, that, that scream, that are so me. And I'm so glad I did this video because I hadn't really done, I had done like a deathly floral fragrance before, but nothing really that, you know, indoles, indolic florals, animalic scents are my jam. And if they're your jam, then and if they're not, that's fine too. Glad that I did this video. So thank you, Dr. Claire Smith, for giving me a little bit of inspiration to do that. So until next time, you've been watching another edition of The Fragrantition. Spray the filth. And if you want to be filthy, be filthy. Till next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.